Hi, this is Paul from Model Builder International again. Uh, don't forget, the subscribe button's down there. Click on that and you'll get notified of all the future videos. Today we're going to have a look at a new kit from Platts. This is a UH-60J from the Anime Rescue Wing series. Okay, so for a bit of history, but just for a change, this one I'll start talking about an anime TV series. Uh, Rescue Wings was an anime TV series which aired in Japan for the first time in 2006. There was also a uh, film released in 2008, the film was with real people. And then there was two more anime series after that. Um, looking at the deck sheet and comparing it to photographs of real aircraft, it looks as though uh, the model kit is actually for a real um, UH-60J that just happens to be also in the anime series, so you sort of get uh, both sides of it. Um, the, uh, the UH-60J itself um, is the J's Japanese version, it's only operated by the J Japan Air Self-Defense Force. Um, it has, obviously has the external fuel tanks, external rescue winch, uh, Japanese built radar, forward looking infrared turret in the nose, which isn't extra in this kit, which you, isn't in the, uh, some of the other kits. Um, this particular fuel tanks can be attached on pilots and stub wings. UH-60Js began deliveries in 1991, entered service in 92. Um, total of 40 UH-60Js were in service in 2010 and they ordered another 40 in 2010 to replace uh, the original batch. Um, and that's about it for the, for the history of the aircraft and the series. Okay, so let's have a look see what we get inside the box. Uh, it's done by Platts, Hasegawa there, so that tells me it's uh, probably Hasegawa plastic inside. Um, Done as the Rescue Wings is an anime series on Japanese TV. I'll put more information about that on the website and a little bit before this as well on the video, obviously. Um, so on the outside we have there's some pictures. Obviously it's a Japanese Air Self Defense Force UH-60J rescue helicopter. On the back, um, color profiles. Um, and if we have a look inside, there's a loose sheet there, more information about it in Japanese, some stills from the, from the TV series on the back, um, it's more stuff, looks like girls on Panzer, not sure, so important stuff. All the plastic is inside one bag, white. And then we've got um, clear parts and a small photo etch for it. And in the, another bag, the uh, there's like two pieces of oh, there's two sprues in there. One sort of bagged internally, so they can't rub against one another. Decal sheet by Cartograph. Lots of bits on there. And the instructions. Instructions are in a sample booklet. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven steps. There's a few bits left over. There's, there's a refueling probe down there. Um, instructions look pretty neat. Um, Obviously this kit's 172nd, I don't think I mentioned that. Um, some holes you need to open up. But, uh, it looks like this is, oh, this is where all the photo etch goes. And so it tells you about that. And there's your decal sheet. Um, looks like the top one is the outside, the bottom one, or the bigger decals, the bottom ones, stencils. Color, the paint's called out in uh, Mr. Color and 
model master as usual. So I'll open up the bags and we'll have a quick look at the parts. Okay, so having a look at this, um, what do we got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five sprues. Um, no flash on them as I can see, not yet anyway. Um, so fuselage is in two halves, recessed panel lines in places pretty subtle actually. I can feel them with my fingernail but not with my fingertip. Um, main or well, the rear wheel is uh, moulded on there. Some small arms. 172nd figures. I can see the arms down there, more small arms. Inside, not much detail, but probably build the interior anyway. Here's the other side. Uh, three more figures. Not all the figures are used, I believe. Again, uh, pretty subtle panel lines. Oh, looks quite nice. Um, we got here. There's that refueling probe that isn't used that I mentioned. No flash. Um, generally small attachment points, which is pretty good. Fuel tanks, seats, some of the small parts. Oh, there's one, two, three, another six screws. Tail rotor, uh, here's the interior. I can see there's uh, like ribbing on the floor there. Just feel it with my fingernail there. Uh, wheels, two more figures. This looks nice and the main blades and looks like the parts a lot of parts for the main main rotor head as well a couple of flying controls it's all pretty neat nice small attachment points should be a reasonable build. here's the clear parts canopy windows and a couple of bubble windows inside there's the photo etch parts Um, looks like they're actually produced by Hasegawa. The other thing I found when I opened the bag was there's a metal part in here as well. Looks like a nose, um, something that goes on the, on the nose, some sort of imaging sensor. So that's all good. And the decal sheet, lots of tiny little decals. Um, they are done by cartograph, so I don't expect any problems, but they all look quite nice. Car, uh, decals for the instrument panels. Um, so it looks pretty neat. So I'll um, we'll go through the instructions step at a time and have a quick look or a close up look at some of the parts. So now for a bit of history of the plastic, so to speak. Um, there's been quite a few, obviously, lots of boxings of the Black Hawk, but since we're just talking about the U860J, we'll concentrate on that. So overall, it looks like there's been seven new toolings of the Black Hawk overall in 172nd. Fujimi and Hasegawa were the first, and their Black Hawks were produced in 1985. And it's from that Hasegawa kit that this boxing originates. Only Hasegawa and Fujimi have released U860J versions. And uh, they seem pretty popular. Hasegawa released. U860J in 2015 and another one uh, in 2000, 
18. And Platts is obviously um, is certainly different from the 2018 Hasegawa one, different decals, um, similar paint scheme, but a, but a different aircraft. So this kit has quite a few parts that are not used actually. Um, there's 16 clear parts, of which four are not used. There's 121 plastic parts in the box, but 47 of them are not used. And there's 15 PE parts on the fret, and you use uh, 14 out of that 15. And then we start with the kit, and just for a change, we don't start with the cockpit, we start with the rain, main rotor head. Um, not too many parts here, but um, getting the pitch change rods in there is sometimes a bit tricky, but overall shouldn't be a problem. Then down to step two, where we do build the cockpit and the interior of the helicopter. Um, figures are not too bad. Um, some bit of detail there, so you can add some colour. They'll, if you put the uh, pilot and co-pilot in, they'll cover up the seats, which are not overly detailed. Um, and then just fitting the cockpit parts and they use decals for the instrument panels. Step three is reasonably straightforward, just trapping what you've built so far, well the cabin anyway, between the two cockpit halves. Um, it does say to drill a 1.5mm hole in there and there's uh, colour call outs all the way through the build um, and as I mentioned before it uses was it testors and um, model master. Step four, reasonably simple, add the tail rotor and the elevator. Um, looks like you could actually add the tail rotor much later, which you probably do anyway, just so you can paint the paint the fuselage. Across to step five, it is engine intake and exhausts, and just adding a few small parts here. Then down to step six and adding the landing gear assembly. Um, add the struts and then the wheels, but again, maybe you'll add the wheels later just so you make life easy for yourself when painting the fuselage. Step seven's adding all the canopies. Um, this shouldn't be too bad, um, adding the side doors, as, or one side door as well, adding the uh, canopy to that as well. Lots of glass on this aircraft, so if you want to add some more details to the interior, it uh, it's wouldn't go amiss. And finally down to step 8 where basically you're doing exactly the same for the most part of step 7 except you're doing it on the starboard side of the aircraft and you just add the rescue hoist at the same time. Step 9 is basically adding various parts mostly underneath the aircraft in this stage. So this will be sensors, some aerials, um, adding the radar nose on so basically just adding lots of small little bits that probably you can probably attach and then just do some fine painting afterwards after you've painted the fuselage to uh, touch those up. Step 10 is putting together the external tanks. Uh, also I put together the uh, stub wings that they're going to attach to and then fit them to the aircraft. Um, interestingly you do have um, external refueling probe in the kit that's not used. Uh, these were actually fitted to the aircraft from about 2009 onwards and they're trained for um, night mid-air refuelling so they can do um, sea rescues far out at sea and they have specially trained Hercules crews that they work with. And step 11, the final step of the build, um, adding more small parts. Um, add the port side external fuel tank adding what looks to be um, chaff dispensers, I'd say, flare dispensers, I'd say, and adding aerials as well. And you also add the metal, um, what I think is forward-looking infrared sensor, that's the metal part. Um, yeah, and some photo etch going on in this stage as well. The only other step that it does mention is um, the instructions for the photo etch you get a sheet that shows you where to drill all the holes and what size they all need to be so you can get all that lot done in advance and it shows you exactly where all the photo etch goes um, before you actually start fitting it in the various parts of the build 
So now on to um, painting and decals. Um, I like the fact the plastic is actually white, which is going to help a lot with an aircraft that is mostly white and yellow. And it's going to help a lot with stopping the colour of the plastic bleeding through, since the plastic's white, it doesn't matter. Um, you'd have a real problem if this plastic was a dark colour. Um, the instructions are in black and white. Um, colour might be nice, but there's enough here to actually get everything done. Um, external parts, are colours are called out. Um, decal sheet is good enough. You get uh, at the top it shows you, I should say, where the, the bigger decals go. And at the bottom it shows you where all the, the smaller ones go, the uh, stencils and such like. Um, looking at the decals, it looks as though you have enough decals to actually do two different aircraft. I should say the main things, there's one each there for each of the aircraft, but you get two sets of numbers. Um, so that's pretty neat. So you can actually make it look a little bit different. Um, and it certainly look, it'll be a very colourful aircraft on the shelf. So, an overall conclusion. Um, it's as good a UH-60J as you're going to get. There's nothing out there that's any newer that's available. Um, it'll look really good on the shelf. If it's going to be you know white and a bright yellow, it's going to stand out and look pretty impressive. And also be pretty unique. Um, the kit looks pretty good, uh, good quality. The sprues are still in good condition. Um, and they originally sort of date back, some of them will date back to the mid 80s, but some of them will be newer, such as the fuel tanks, um, which obviously weren't part of the original uh, Black Hawk when it came out. Um, so it's not all, everything in the box, not everything in the box is from, should we say, 1985 vintage. Um, so overall, it should be a pretty Good model. The um, panel lines are very finely recessed, um, but you can still put, add some extra detail there. You can add some detail in the interior of the cabin as well. It would probably benefit from that with all the uh, the glass outside it. But overall, pretty neat, nice and colourful. And many thanks to Platts for sending along for us to have a look at.